Multi Edit was just released by Figma this week. It's another incredible feature that I never knew I needed, but now I feel like I'm gonna use it every day. As usual, you've got a Figma file in the description, so feel free to follow along. Let's jump in. To start off, I want us to understand what even are matching objects. So, according to Figma, matching objects are identical layers that exist across more than one frame or group. So, we need to have a layer that is exactly identical to another, meaning they need to have the same name, and they need to be across different frames or different groups. Let's see this in practice. So over here, we have just a frame that has a heart, a cloud, and a star, and then you have that kind of duplicated across other frames. Now, if I select my heart, you'll see the new multi-edit tool here at the top, and if I click on it, it's going to select all of the other hearts. And that is because if I select kind of all of my frames and look in the layers panel, you will see that they are all called star heart cloud. If I change the name of one of them, so this one, I'm not gonna call it heart anymore. I'm gonna call it, nope. So now, when I select my heart and select the multi-edit tool, it will not select that heart. Yeah, so they have to have the same names across different frames and they need to be identical. Now, if one of them was a different color, for example, let's say this one was yellow, when I select my heart, and I'm gonna use the shortcut for this, which is Command, Option, and A. So it's like Command, A, but just add the option. You see that the yellow one is still selected. So it cares about the name, it cares if they're in a different frame, but it doesn't care about the color. Moving on. So we saw how we can click on one object and then just like find it everywhere else. But we can also do this in a slightly different way. If I select this red circle and then I use Command Option A, it will find all of the top ones. Great. But I have another way of doing this. So if I select my red one and then I hold down Shift and I drag, it will also select just those ones wherever I'm dragging. You will also see that just by holding Shift down, it's usually it's highlighting, uh, it's doing a little bounding box over the ones that it finds that are matching. And that's super cool because if I select like both of these, now I can do that, yeah? So let's say I wanna change the top and the bottom one, but only on these two. Uh, and instead of light gray, I'm gonna change them to purple. So there's a few different ways that we can make this selection. We can either select the element and then command option and A, to find it anywhere else, or we can select the object and hold down shift and just drag to find it wherever we need to. Another cool thing is that we can use our alignment tools with the multi-edit. So for example, if I select this mushroom and I wanna find all of the mushrooms, so command option A, I found all of them. By the way, if you are doing this shortcut step-by-step, step, make sure you're doing command option A and not command A option. Because if I select the mushroom, command A, I'm still holding them down and you see what happened. It selected everything because Command A selects everything. Then when I add the option, it's gonna find both of those everywhere, which is kind of like we did with the top and the bottom circle. So it's finding two objects rather than finding just one. So select the mushroom, Command, Option and A. I'm selecting all the mushrooms. And then I'm going to align left. They're gonna align left of each other, but look what happens when I align them to the top. So they're gonna align to the top, but in their own individual frames. So you see, let's say, a Command Z for a second. So you see like green was a bit further down and then when I clicked on align to the top, it kind of aligned to the top the same way the others are. So it looks at the one we selected and kind of aligns them to that one, but in their own parent frames. It's a bit of a weird concept. Now we can still use the align as group, right? Because if I select both of these, for example, Command Shift and A, you see now, that they have different relationships with each other, right? The red and the yellow are kind of close, the green and the orange are really far away. These two are kind of similar to the first one. If I align like horizontal centers, it will just align all of them to their own horizontal centers, but I'm just gonna Command Z. If I select all of them, hold down Shift and align center, align center, it aligns them as a group to their horizontal vertical centers of their parent. So there's just a bit of trial and error to be had here. Play around with it, see if it does what you want it to do. Now we can apply some transformation even if our shapes weren't the same to begin with. So up till now, most of our shapes were about the same size, had about the same kind of rotation. But let's look at these moons, for example. I'm gonna command option A. I'm selecting all of the moons, even though different sizes, different colors, different rotations. Now you'll see here, everything is mixed, right? But let's say I wanna make all of them half the size. So after the word mix, I'm gonna add a backslash and a two, and it will do that for all of them. So they're not the same size. It's not like it made all of them the same size and then have to buy two. They kept their individual sizes, 
but they have them a bit. This works with scrubbing as well. So I'm just gonna command Z. If I scrub over my um, rotation and they each just keep rotating. So they don't need to align themselves to the same rotation as the other. And of course I can also move them. So if I select all of my stars, command option A, I can then move them around inside of their individual frames and they'll just kind of move around. Another cool thing that we can do is we can reparent and reparent them to different frames. For example, I have this card, inside of it there is another frame and the three avatars. Each one of these frames is set up in the same way. But if I select all of my three avatars, command option A, and then I'm going to start dragging them so they're inside of the frame. You see already I can tell that this worked because all of the inside frames got that bounding box that lets me know that they've kind of absorbed an element. And also you can see in the layers panel that they're outside of the frame, now they're inside of the inner frame. And it does that, they're kind of still aligned-ish to each other just because they were before. Um, and you can see how it looks relatively inside of the different inner frames. Now with multi-edit, we also got some new copying and pasting things going on. So if I take this dog, I'm gonna copy it. Then I'll select these three frames and I'm just gonna paste it. The dog will be pasted in that location on the three frames. We're already familiar with this. But if I select the dog, the cat and the unicorn, copy them, select this frame and paste them. So it will paste them all together in the same place that they were, right? So the cat was on the far left, the unicorn was in the middle, the dog was at the top. But what if I'm selecting all of these, copying them, and I'm gonna paste them on all three of these. So we would probably expect that every one of these frames would get three of the animals inside. But if I paste it now, this is actually what happens. It kind of pastes them sequentially. So if I had six of these frames, and let's say I'm just gonna copy the dog and the cat, and I'm gonna select all six of the frames, paste it, this is what happens. It pastes over dog, cat, dog, cat, dog, cat and it kind of matches up the order that I copied them in and the order that I pasted them in. So if I copy unicorn first and dog second, copy, then I'll select this one, this one, this one. So I select this one first, so it should get a unicorn, this one should get a dog, and this one should also get a unicorn. Boom. If I did it in a different way, so I copied dog first and then unicorn second, copy, one, two, three, now it would be the opposite, yeah? So it all depends on what is the order that you selected them in and what is the order that you're pasting them in. Now, to be honest, all of this now was just a bit of faff. This is the main event in my opinion. Multi-edit for text. I'm going to select this text box and I'm going to command option A. It's gonna select all of my text boxes. You'll see that there's another tool here at the top, the multi-edit text. You can also click on enter to get to it. And now if I write something, it gets changed in all of these text boxes. I'm just gonna give you like 10 seconds to let that sink in. Yeah! I know. Now another cool thing is that this works inside of auto layout as well, so you can move things around. So I've got three auto layouts here. They're all set to wrap, but this one is just a bit wider and this one's a bit um, thinner. That's why um, they look in different layouts. And if I select one of the elements inside and I command option and A, it will find it in all of them and I can move the objects inside of their respective auto layouts at the same time. If these were not the same type of auto layout, so this one is going to be a horizontal one, this one will be wrap, and let's say I change this one to vertical. When I select one, command option A, when I click on the right arrow, you see it only moves in the horizontal layout and in the wrap layout. If I click down, it will move in the vertical one, but it still finds them and they can still move together, but depending on the layout, it depends which arrow is going to move them around. Now, you can also multi-edit on variants. This one, I have to say, still feels a bit buggy because you kind of have to plan what you're editing before you're editing, but maybe that's fine. Maybe we all need a bit of planning in our life. So for example, I have an arrow here and I wanna bring this arrow into all of my variants. In order to multi-edit variants, you can either select your component set and then click on the multi-edit variant tool or you can click on Q. So once you do that, you can kind of see that if I'm selecting my set, they all have this like dotted line, but I can also just click on enter and select all of them. Now I wanna bring this arrow into them. So this is why I'm saying it's buggy. If I just try and drag it in, I would have lost my multi-edit. So I have to select my arrow, copy it, planning, then select my set, Q, 
few and then I need to paste it in. Yeah. So you see what I mean? It works. It's cool. I, I am editing all of my variants at the same time, but it requires some planning. So it's, in my opinion, it's still a bit buggy. Sorry, Figma. So this one is another one of my favorites. I think it's probably third on my list after the editing and just the general tool. So if you select an element that you have elsewhere in your design, I'm going to command option A and select it everywhere. I have the option to create this into a component. Now we've all done this before. We've designed something, used it everywhere and then realized, oh, I should have probably made a component out of it, but you can't be asked to make a component and then find it everywhere and replace it. So that's what this is going to do for us. I've selected all of these Pac-Men and then I'm going to just create a component. And you see what happened? It created it outside of these frames. I've got my little Pac-Man and all of these are instances of it. So if I go in and I edited it, you see that they're all going to be edited with it. This one's really cool. So let's practice with a few practical examples. I have a few screens here and let's say instead of add to bag, I want it to be a different CTA. Now, of course, if this was a component to begin with, I could have just changed it there, but it's not a component. So I'll select my text box, command option A, and then I'll enter to enter my multi-edit text mode and change it to a different CTA, like add to cart. Yeah. Now let's say this favorite icon, I feel like I'm using it here, I'm using it here. It should probably be a component. So I'll select it, command option A. It selects both for me and then create component. Now I have it here. What about these arrows? I'm gonna select one of the arrow frames, command option A. It found it over here and over here. I think I probably wanna make it a bit bigger. So I'll click on K and just drag it. Yeah, you can just play around and do loads of different things. Now let's have a look here. I did take this one from the um, playground that Figma provide. I'd really recommend checking that one out as well. It's a great file with lots of examples of how you can use multi-edit. So I've got three different kinds of this card. They're all auto layouts and I want to add this add to cart into there. So I'm going to copy it, select my set, enter to select all the variants and then Q so I'm multi-editing now and paste. And it pasted it in, yeah? And it pasted it in according to the auto layout. So th this one was a horizontal auto layout, so it pasted it next to it rather than underneath it. And that was it. I hope that gave you a little intro to what the multi-edit feature can do and how you can use it. Now it's really about just playing around with this in your own files and seeing how it can help you. I will say that one tiny thing that I don't like about it is that it doesn't select things if they're in the same frame. I would have really loved it if I could also use this just to find things that are the same within one frame and not just within other frames. But that's one for another day. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Let me know what other videos you wanna see. See you at the next one.